Hello. There we are. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Sunday morning. And uh, I heard a rumor that Pedro and family were in the house, so welcome to Canada, and thank you so much for joining us this morning in our worship and celebration of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to this. You tune in this morning online and live streaming, and we just uh, thank you for doing that. And uh, uh, I pray that you will worship with us and you'll just kick back and enjoy the whole service and, uh, and just be a part of all that we're doing. So, Father, I give you the praise, glory, and honor, and I thank you that we can come into this house this morning and, and, uh, and just worship you with praise and thanks, giving in our hearts. And, and Lord, that we enter into, these, uh, into this place this morning with, with just a, a, a sense of your uh, presence and your uh, joy in our hearts, Lord. I thank you for those, Lord, that... Um, that are tuning in online, and uh, Lord, but we lift up those that can't make it this morning due to being uh, not feeling well or whatever's going on in their life. I lift them up to you and ask that you touch their bodies with absolute wholeness. And anybody that's uh, listening online that's not feeling well today, Lord, we just ask that you'd reach out with your hand, a uh, sovereign hand, and just touch their bodies from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. May they absolutely feel your presence this morning. So anyway, welcome this morning, and thank you, Lord, for touching them. And remember, we have the hand-washing stations at the northwest doors, and our exiting west doors are, uh, are all uh, COVID-friendly. Amen? And we will get through this, and, uh, and we will be back to normal here right away quick. Amen? So anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Why don't we stand this morning and get ready to worship the Lord, and you at home too. Stand up and worship the Lord this morning with your hands in the air, and just thanks. You lose yourself in worship this morning. Don't be afraid to just dance and be who you are. And you might have to just dance in one spot, but just dance anyway. Amen? Amen. Let's worship the Lord this morning.
Why I sing your praise will ever be on my 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand this morning. <clears throat> and let's give that worship team a hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Are your hands sore? Let's do it again. Hallelujah for the worship team. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Well, welcome this morning to our service and... Uh, Thank you so much for uh, braving the uh, times and coming out to service this morning. And um, you know we're gonna we do our best to uh, keep things rolling under the conditions. And uh, we we do remember we do offer the hand washing stations and the mats are available for you if you don't have your own when you come in the northwest doors and we exit out the west doors. So there's entrance and exits. Amen. Keep everybody safe and remember wash your hands everywhere you go in the bathroom, at the tables. And if you want to give this morning, you can give. If you didn't grab an envelope, you can fill one out on the way out. Um, you know, many people like to give online nowadays, so you, we have that option to you that are listening online. Or if you're here this morning and you just want to give or tithe, uh, tithes and offerings that way, you're welcome to do that. And all you need to do is go to yvcadmin at sastel.net, yvcadmin at sastel.net, and you can give that way. And it's a great way to do it, and uh, your information is... If, you, if it's the first time you've given, make sure you send a little note giving your address and stuff, because if you're just giving online and you... You know, we have people that give from different parts of, the, of, our, of our province and country and whatever. And anyway, so we need your address if we don't have it on file already. So uh, make sure you do that and let us know that. So you get your tax receipt, right? So obviously anything over $20, there's a tax receipt. If you have a tax receipt coming to you and, you, and you're here this morning and uh, we're mailing them out tomorrow, mor tomorrow they'll be mailed out. But uh, I do have them available if you're, if you're in the house this morning and you have not received your tax receipt but you filled it out, make sure you've filled out an envelope. If you've just given cash, obviously there's no way of tracking who you are, right? So that's why it's important to put your address and your name on the little envelopes when you give a tithes and offering, right? So if you're here this morning, you've done that. Uh, I didn't put it out in my office, but I will put it out at the end of the service. It'll be on that back table, and you can help yourself. It's all alphabetical. Find your name, grab your tax receipt, and then uh, one thing about a tax receipt is always uh, a, a blessing. If you desire to, uh, when you do your taxes, it just gives you, it allows you to give more and take from the government to give more to the kingdom. Amen. How many know the government likes to take all they can get, right? So if you don't, if you don't, uh, if you don't get, you know, we, we pay taxes, and that's why you have an opportunity to get taxes back, and you can give more, or you can uh, go out for a nice meal or something. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, praise the Lord. I'm excited to be here with you this morning. And uh, don't forget about our Tuesday night Bible studies. We, we are, we're having such an awesome time with uh, Dr. Ron Swanson. Uh, he uh, has been teaching us online. And uh, he's uh, uh, the Victory Bible College, uh, uh, one of the teachers there. And uh, so it's been great teaching. We've been uh, learning lots. And so that's Tuesday night at 7 p.m. That's our midweek service. So come on out and enjoy that. And uh, we have an awesome time uh, just listening to the Word and then uh, discussing the Word. Amen. I mean, it's important to get as much word in you as you can. You can't go out and preach the gospel if you don't have no word. Amen? And you can read the Bible at home, and you can learn, and sometimes you go, what's that? You know, and you have these questions. And, and so we're finding that, you know, just, you know, he, he's got some real good points about faith and different things. And I'm, I guess, uh, I'm going to get uh, um, um, James to share a little bit about that in a moment. He'll share a little bit about that, uh, uh, just uh, the Bible study, whatever, whatever God's put on his heart. I'd like to... Uh, I'd get people once in a while to do a, like a 10-minute go, right? So uh, where you come and you just share a scripture or two and, and what does it mean to you and, and why, are, you know, why is that affecting your life, the scripture you want to share and whatever. So whatever God puts on your heart, um, I'd love to hear from you if you're interested in being a part of that. Um, sometimes I just pick you out of the crowd and I, and, I, and I just say, you know, next week bring a couple scriptures or whatever, right? So amen? Amen. So Tuesday we covered that. We covered the tithes and offerings and... Uh, Ah, tax receipts. Like I said, I'll put them out at the back table if you haven't got it yet. What? Oh, they're there? Oh, okay. Yeah, perfect. But just wait until after service before you go get them, and uh, if you haven't already. <clears throat> and also, if you're looking for employment, Little Lambs Learning Center, which is a daycare in the church here, it was always looking for employees uh, part-time, full-time, different, different areas. Uh, just drop off a resume, and we'll try to fit you in when we need you. Um, but, uh, you know, it's always good to just keep an upper hand or if you have children or you know someone that has children that are looking for a good 
good uh, quality daycare uh, from 6 to 6, Monday to Friday. Yeah, you know, that's uh, Little Lambs Early Learning Center, and you can uh, just contact the church uh, for that information. Or you can go to LLELC at sastel.net and drop off a resume or email a resume to that address. You can drop it off in person if you want to. Amen? Um, and Serendipity Thrift Store. How many know about Serendipity Thrift Store? Great place to shop. Great place to work. Amen? So if you're interested in helping out, volunteering there, we will, Sandra and Warren would love your help there to uh, go through all the stuff that's there and uh, sort through it and to help them out anytime. So drop by Serendipity Thrift Store, 50 Broadway Street West in Yorkton, and they'll love to uh, take your stuff or take your time and uh, put it to good use. Amen? Amen. So that's a, Serendipity is all about helping the community. It's not uh, something that the church makes revenue off of. We're just a part of it. And... Uh, uh, but uh, it, if someone's had a fire or someone's looking for work and ha- needs some clothing, we're there to help them. Um, and uh, and if they, or if somebody just is down, or maybe the finances aren't that strong at the moment or whatever, or maybe they just like good quality used stuff, it's available. Amen? So don't hesitate to give, don't, don't hesitate to buy, and don't hesitate to help. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. You know, I was thinking about... Uh, I was thinking about my son-in-law, Alex, you know, uh, he wasn't sure about having a beard, but it grew on him. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, on another note, there's this uh, Colorado guy and a rancher, and there's this Texas rancher, and they're just having a discussion one day at a coffee shop, and the the Texan's like, yeah, so I got plenty of land. How much land do you have in Colorado there? He said, well, I got about 20,000 acres or so. And he said, it uh, doesn't take me long to cruise across it and whatever. And, and the Texan goes, yeah, well, you know what? When I start in the morning at sun, sunrise, he said, I get in my truck and I drive to the end of my property. It takes me till sundown. And the Colorado says, yeah, I had a truck like that once too. Hey, come on. <laughs> Woo. I'm not sure. I didn't clear that with my wife this morning, but maybe I should have. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to ask James to come, and uh, James is going to share a little bit, a uh, couple of minutes on, uh, on uh, whatever God's put on his heart. And so why don't we give him a hand as he comes and, and shares that little bit of work. Amen. Oh, that's a good point. Thanks. <laughs> I better pick it up. <laughs> Your microphone's not on.
Mm, that's good.
good reputation over great riches, being held in high esteem far better than silver or gold. That's what I'd like to end on. Amen. Come on, let's give him a hand. Hallelujah. Good word, good word, good word. So I definitely got uh, that guy dressed better. <clears throat> anyway, good word, James. You know, and that's what it's all about, right? It's, uh, it's about stepping out and just uh, coming and, and sharing your heart. What has God laid on your heart? Because if you're a born-again believer, uh, I'm sure God has put something on your heart if you're reading the Bible. Amen? There must be a scripture that would stand out and you go, oh, you know. Um, you know, like, uh, you know, anyway, so if that interests you, we'd love to uh, allow you to share with your your heart and your thoughts. So last week we talked about, uh, um, you know, just people and, and, and what it's like when people come into the, hu- into the house and, and uh, you know, when they come to the door and you ask them how they're doing and everything is always good, right? And Matthew, uh, um, what's the name of that singer? West. West. Ma- is it Matthew West? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Matthew West, you know, it's a great song, I, you know, and I hear it a lot. And, um, and, you know, and as you listen to the words of it, you know, it just sounds so real to, uh, you know, people that you personally know are going through a struggle, but you'll hear them say, oh, no, I'm fine. Everything's great. Right? I, I like it. You know, I was listening again this morning because it comes on K-Love. If you ever listen to K-Love or, or, or the rock radio station, you know, they, they play it. And, uh, but anyway, it, uh, you know, it just it speaks such truth. And, and really, we, we call this a hospital for the sick, right? And uh, it's supposed to be a, a place where you can come and get better and get healed and, and walk out feeling good, not, not feeling discouraged or, or struggling with the same thing you came in with. And this morning I want to talk to you about uh, a little bit of, about praise and worship. And, and it was interesting because Michelle was talking about in, prayer, in the prayer room this morning about, uh, about letting our praises be real. And, and, uh, and I thought, wow, that's what I'm speaking on. So, you know, I, I, it, it, it's interesting how, how God lines things up. Amen. And how integrity and, and, you know, we can be here in church lifting our hands and, and praising the Lord and then, and then going out there ripping people off and, and whatever. And, uh, you, know, you're, so you're, you know, what you look like in the house should be what you look like outside the house. Amen. You shouldn't uh, allow yourself to be one person here. You, you know, you're not double-minded. You're one person here, another person out there, right? So, and, uh, and, I mean, and like he said, we all fall short. So I'm not here to beat you up or, or torture you with that. I'm here to say that, you know what, seeking the Lord is going to help you get better at serving him. Amen? And the more you seek him, the better you're going to be to serve him. And the more you seek him, the more you'll have to offer the people that are struggling. And uh, because you'll, you, the more you seek him, the more fruit you begin to produce. The more you worship him, the more you learn his heart, right? Even the angels bow down to, to the Lord. Day and night, holy, holy are you, Lord. They worship him day and night. God loves our worship. Amen? And he, but he loves our real worship. He, he loves it when you turn on music and, and you just get goosebumps and you're like, oh, it's such a good song in the moment, right? You know, we can praise him when everything is going well. Hallelujah. My life is great. But what about when things are going bad? What about when things are just hell's coming against you everywhere? It's easy to praise him when you're happy. It's hard to praise him when... All hell's coming against you. But it's in that time of being able to praise him when all hell's coming against you, you'll find the best breakthrough. Because it's in those moments that you find yourself vulnerable and you you just humble yourself and you just fall to your face. If you learn to just worship him in those moments, you'll see the breakthroughs you're looking for. When you can push the enemy aside and say, Lord, I can't handle this, but I know you've got this. Because we have to remember what the scriptures say. We've talked about it. The battle is the Lord's. Amen? The battle is the Lord's. I want to take you back to Psalms chapter 105, verses 2 and 3. We remember last week we Psalms 105, verses 1. Now I want to read 2 and 3. And then we'll talk about 2 and 3 a little bit this morning. Psalm 105, verses 2 and 3. Sing to him, yes, sing his praises. Tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. Exalt him in his holy name. Rejoice, you, will, you who worship the Lord. I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about, you know, you know when we're praising him and we're, and, we're, and we're singing about, you know, we're, we're, we're making songs in our heart about the Lord. I mean, have you ever done that? Have you ever gone through something and said, 
you know, just begin to sing a song and, and, uh, and, and just worship him out of your heart and, and, uh, and, just, and just claim the victory that he gives us, even though you're in a, you're in a, you're in a, you're in a battle and you're, you're down and out. But if you could reach within yourself and begin to just praise him and sing songs to him, Amen? If you could just find that place where, you're, where you know, first of all, you need to remember and you need to know that he is your strength. Because when, when you abide in the shelter of the Lord, that's where your strength comes from. When the battle is the Lord's, you need to give the battle to the Lord. Amen? You can't allow the enemy to beat you with it. You've got to give it to the Lord. Because if you allow the enemy to beat you with it, he'll just keep beating you and beating you and beating you. And then finally he'll just say, you continue and you continue to beat yourself and no one needs to be around you. Right? But when we worship the Lord, we can find freedom. We can, we can break out of that if we can just find that place where we just uh, determine in our hearts, Lord, this is your battle. This isn't my battle. I mean, if you're causing it, if you're creating it in your own life, well, then, it, then, then, then you need to figure out why you're doing that. Right? The enemy, the enemy opens doors, but it's your, your brain that decides whether or not you're walking through that door. It's like James said this morning. It's your mindset. Where's your mind at? If, you have, if you're a new creation and your mind has changed, then you should have a different mindset that you did that you have than you, when you were in the world, right? And your mind should be about, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like the, the, the prodigal son in the pig pen. He, he changed his mind and he went back. He realized, what? I've sold, I've, I've lost everything. I spent everything. I'm eating pig food. It's much better if I go to my father now. And even, even if I just go to him and I serve him as, as one of his slaves, is better than doing what I'm doing because at least I get to eat, right? But humbling himself, going to his dad and saying, I just want to be a slave along with the other slaves or the other workers. And his dad says, no, you know, and that's what your daddy in heaven does. When you humble yourself and you come back and you begin to praise him and you begin to worship him, and it doesn't matter what you've gone through. It's, it's, it's not about what you've gone through. It's about how you can get back up and stand up and, and, and walk into his kingdom, Amen. And so when we look at this, it says to, to praise him and, and uh, not just praise him, but demonstrate your praise, showing people. So when you're out uh, doing the Great Commission, going into all the world and preaching the gospel, they know that you're a Christian by your, by your love for the Lord. Amen? And your praises, they see you in the church, they see you out of the church, praising the Lord. I had someone tell me one time, they said, you know, I don't know why Christians have got to be so religious. I, says, I see this guy walking down the street and his hands are in the air. But you know what? I know the guy. And I know his hands are in the air in the church, too. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, so to me, it's like the enemy puts these, these, these thoughts in people in the world's mind to make them seem like they're religious until one day he can get a hold of their hearts and show them that they're not religious. They love Jesus. And they're not worried about who's around them. See, see that's the thing. When the enemy gets us, he gets us by, by, by us not wanting to put our hands up to worship and praise. How many know that we're lifting your hands to heaven is, is offering yourself to the Lord? So to not lift your hands and saying, I just want to stand here and sing songs. Right? Lift your hands to the Lord. Lose yourself in worship. Because if we, don't, if, we, if we continue to think about who's around us, we can never enter into the place where we need to enter into. If we're worried about what people think, I live in an apartment, so I don't want to turn my music up too loud because I don't want people to know that I'm worshiping you. Right? But people do that. They say, oh, I can't turn my music up in my house because... I don't want, you know, I don't want the neighbors to be bothered by my music, right? There's, there's, a, there's a sound time for a reason, amen? I'm not saying you need to be an irritating person and, and they just want to just, people, the, your neighbors want to just eliminate you. You know, that's not, that's not being a good Christian either. But to turn your music up so that you can enjoy it and, and worship the Lord or, or you're singing with praises out of your mouth and maybe you, maybe you sound like a cat that's hurting, you know, people will stop because, because someone says, well, you sound, you know, but you're praising the Lord out of your own heart. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord and he receives it. It's your joy. It's your heart. You know, if, if you come and you, and you try out for worship practice, you might, you might be trying out for worship practice for 20 years, right? But you're stepping into it, right? You're stepping out. They might never let you up in front of people, or like what one pastor said one time, he said, he said, there's a reason when we have 80 choir members, only a few of them have a microphone in front of them. <laughs> right? Because some of them are just filling a gap. <laughs> yeah, so anyway. Anyway, so I want to go to a, 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 a scripture that we're very familiar with in, in Exodus. 
Exodus 14. And this is when, uh, obviously, the children of Israel were being released from Egypt, and, and they're at the Red Sea, uh, and, uh, and the army's coming at them. And, and it's just, it's interesting, because this is your daddy speaking, and this is the Father in heaven speaking about, uh, you know, what's happening in this moment and, uh, through Moses. So let's read that. That's uh, Exodus 14, uh, 29 and 31. But the people of Israel had walked through the middle of the sea of the, on dry ground, as the water stood up like a wall on both sides. That is how the Lord rescued Israel from the hand of the Egyptians that day. And the Israelites saw the bodies of the Egyptians washed up on the seashore. When the people of Israel saw the mighty power that the Lord had unleashed against the Egyptians, they were filled with awe before him. They put their faith in the Lord and, the ser- and in his servant Moses. Amen. When, when the Lord delivers you, he doesn't do anything halfway. He did not make them struggle to get through the sea on wet ground. He dried the ground for them. Because when he wants to deliver you, he takes all the barriers out of the way. And he takes care of it because the battle's his. Is that right? It was him that parted the sea. It wasn't Moses, you know, just like you and I. It's, it's, it's our duties to lay our hands on the sick and see them healed. It's our duty to allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you because you are an oracle and a vessel of the Lord, right? The Holy Spirit can't move around without you, right? He needs to move around with you, and he gives you people to talk to. He gives you words you need to say, just like the disciples. They didn't walk around with a, a, a Bible or a tape recorder telling them, you know, whatever, telling them what the Lord's... The Holy Spirit spoke to them, and then they spoke to the people. When God wants to deliver you, he delivers you on dry ground. He, he sets you so free that there is no barriers, and then you look back and you just see your enemy washed up, right? That's what they did. They looked back and they went, holy moly, the walls of the, of the sea are like walls. Can you imagine what that looked like? And you walk through and you're pulling, you got to remember, they had wagon loads of gold and silver and jewels. It wasn't just people walking on the ground. They were drink, bringing wagons through the sea. And th- think about, it. how long do you think it would really take for the sea to bottom to dry up? Have you ever seen a puddle the water disappears, and the puddle, the mud's still there for how long? Right? These guys had parted, and they began to walk through it on dry ground. That's a miracle, friends. That's because the battle is the Lord's. So that's why Moses had to say, gay hey guys, don't worry. I know you see the army coming. I know the, the enemy's coming. But if we stand strong and stand firm, we'll get through this with no problem. If we trust that the Lord is the Lord... We'll get through this with no problem. If you, if you believe in your heart that you are a born-again believer, if you know that you've asked Jesus Christ in your heart, then the Holy Spirit is within you and the battle is the Lord's. And if you can find that place where you can worship in that and know that no matter what you're going through, you just need to get a hold of some worship, find that. That's why he says you need to humble yourself. You can't come to church and go, yeah, everything's great and all hell's coming against you inside. No, no, no. I'm not doing so well this morning, pastor or friend or brother and sister in Christ. I, you know, I've been going through a lot of struggles lately. How do we pray for you if we don't know what's going on with you? We can't go, everybody in the house, and, and think about all your friends and neighbors and church people and go, Lord, what's this one going through? What's this one going through? What's this one going through? You know, every day. It's much easier if we're willing to humble ourselves and just say, hey, I ain't perfect. I'm going through a battle. But I know if I have brothers and sisters in Christ who can lift me up, who can encourage me instead of discourage me, who can, instead of saying, you know, you'll never amount to nothing, because that's what the world says, Christians should never say that. Love Love your God with all your heart and all your soul. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. See, the only time that hurt comes out of a Christian to another Christian is usually because the Christian is hurting too. And they haven't learned to forgive themselves. Because if you can't forgive yourself, it's really hard to love yourself. You need to find a way to forgive yourself. You need to look in the mirror and know that without a shadow of a doubt that you have forgiven yourself for anything you've done. And you need to walk on dry ground believing that God has provided the way for you. You need to know that he is your conqueror. He is the one that will destroy the enemy, not you. The moment that you go and try to destroy the enemy is the moment that the enemy can attack you because God's hand can't be with you. Because you're taking on the battle yourself. He says, okay, then take the battle on. And when you get tired and beat up, then I'll come and rescue you. We need to know that the Lord's battle is the Lord's battle. Amen? 
So if you belong to him, so if you have possession or property, who protects it? Right? If you have property, who protect, you protect your property. Right? You protect your car. Because right? you own it. So when you give your heart to Jesus Christ, he's yours. You're his. You've made a commitment. You, you signed a document saying, till death do his part. Right? Forever, Lord. I'll, people say that, I'll, I'll serve you forever, Lord. While things are going good. <laughs> right? We need to be real. We need to be real with each other. And we cannot be worried about what people think of us if we're trying. Right? We're moving forwards. Show your integrity. Amen? So here's what happened. So they come through the, they come through the sea, and then in Exodus 15, 1 to 5, Moses says, hey, we've come through that. Let's sing a song. Right? What does he sing? Exodus 15, 1 to 5. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He has hurled both horse and rider into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. Yahweh is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and army he has hurled into the sea. The finest of Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters gushed over them. They sank to the bottom like a stone. I want to go also to do, we're going to do 14, uh, 20, and 21. And this is Miriam, Moses' sister, and Aaron's sister. You mean Exodus oh, 15, 20, Yes, and Exodus 15, 20, and 21, yeah. Okay. What Exodus, did I say? Exodus 15, 20, and 21. Then Miriam the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine and led all the women as the sheep as they played their tambourines and danced. And Miriam sang this song, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He has hurled both horse and rider into the sea. So every time they got, when they got set free here, they began to sing a song to the Lord of his greatness. When was the last time you were going through something and you said, and, and, or, or, or you went through something and the, and the trial was, that, tr that particular trial was over and you began to sing a song out of your heart to the Lord? Not a song somebody necessarily made up, but a song out of your own heart. This wasn't a song they knew. This is a song that Moses made up as he led them in, in this song. That look what the Lord has done. He has helped hurl and kill that enemy that came in attacking me. When you begin to sing songs of praise to the Lord, right? Because we know that the Lord loves our praises. And so, so as soon as they come through that, the first thing they do is sing and, and worship the Lord. And then Miriam takes a tambourine and everybody's dancing and, and shouting. Can you imagine the the noise or the, the sound of worship out of three million people in a wilderness by a sea the echo the sound the Lord would be just like brushing back his hair in heaven going there's my kids because they appreciate what he did right that they appreciate what he did so much that they want to worship him look what the Lord has rescued you and I from look at how he set us free if you just look at your past for a moment. <laughs> Some can look a lot further. <laughs> but, the, but the Lord has rescued us out of a stuff where the enemy, we know, we know that if it wasn't for the Lord, we would not be on this earth. And I know that. And I go, man, Lord, the things I did, but you rescued me. I want to worship you. Thank you for saving me, right? Sing songs of praise to him. Amen? Dance with tambourines. People say, oh, you shouldn't play drums and you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't have... It's not about the instruments. It's about the instruments being worship, or worshiping with those instruments. It's about the heart of the person that wants to spend time coming up here and singing and, and, and learning to sing. See, we have people that that want to come on and be a part of the worship team. But they don't want to, they, they don't want to bad enough because they're, you know, they don't show up to practice. Right? Where's your commitment at when you want to, if you say, I want to be on the worship team, well then show us you want to be on the worship team. 
When you talk to the Conkles, they'll set up times of, of, uh, of practice. And we need more worshipers. You can never have the whole church. We're all called to worship, right? There's just some that probably shouldn't <laughs> out loud, <laughs> right? And I say that with the, with the most gentlest heart. Because how many know that we've had, you know, when you, when you have somebody up there worshiping and you allow them to just do it and, and they're not really um, someone that should be worshiping in public, that's the first say, right? And, and then you have to tell them that maybe we should uh, put someone else in your place. That's a lot harder, amen? So I would rather, you know, train and, and teach and, and, uh, and, uh, and just allow people to learn to worship and grow in worship before they're released to worship. Amen? Anyway, that's a whole nother thing. All right, let's go to uh, First Chronicles, I think it is. Uh, Second Chronicles. Hey, how you doing? I'm uh, doing all right yourself. <laughs> good. Good, good, good. Second Chronicles, yes. Second Chronicles 20. 20 to 25. Yes, amen. Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, Listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets, and you will succeed. After consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. At the very moment they began to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they had destroyed the army of Seir, they began attacking each other. So when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, all they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. King Jehoshaphat and his men went out to gather the plunder. They found vast amounts of equipment, clothing, and other valuables, more than they could carry. There was so much plunder that it took them three days <laughs> just to collect it all. You know, I want you to look at something. And, and first of all, we know the story. Jehoshaphat is being threatened. And then he goes into this time of fasting and prayer. And he's like, Lord, you told me this is the promised land. This is the land that you gave me. You blessed you. You said you'd protect us and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, they're, they're in a time of worship and uh, of, of the gathering of the people. And they're fasting and praying. And all of a sudden, a prophet stands up and says, this is what's going to happen. You're going to go to war, Jehoshaphat, but you're not going to have to fight. Because the Lord is on your side and the battle is the Lord's. Amen? We know that story. And so here we're picking it up right where, where, where the next day they're going to battle. And Jehoshaphat stops and gives them a pep talk, saying, remember, just trust in the Lord and stand firm. How many have heard that before? Stand firm when the enemy's coming against you. Stand strong and know that he's coming against you, but the battle is the Lord's. So don't allow your flesh to fight back. Allow the Lord to take over. Amen? And so when you allow the Lord to take over, look what happened. First thing that Jehoshaphat does, he doesn't say, okay, all my strong soldiers in the front. He says, worshipers, you lead us, singing and dancing as we go to battle. Singing and shouting and dancing and having a great time. And it says that the moment that they began to worship the Lord, the armies that were attacking began to attack each other. Because the Lord caused confusion in their minds. So don't think that the, bad, that the Lord can't handle your problems. The Lord can handle something that's happened to you for 15 years. He can take over that and end it in five minutes. Right here, it shows it in the Word of God. They began to sing, and it says immediately, the armies began to fight each other. Not just fight each other, but they killed each and every one of themselves. Do you think, how did the last person die? Who killed the last person? <laughs> Somebody had to be the last. <laughs> but they fought each other. And, and look what happened in Egypt. When the children of Israel were released from Egypt, God allowed them to take pretty much everything from Pharaoh. Gold, silver, jewels, wagon loads of stuff, plunder. Because when God sends you, when God gives you victory, he doesn't just give you victory. For you, he gives you victory for a lifetime for you. Amen? He allows you to enjoy the plunder that he leaves behind after the battle is his. 
so that you can continue to do the things that you need to do for the kingdom. So that you know that your God is your provider, not just your, not just your helper, not just your partner, but he's your provider for everything. Your finances, everything you have. Look, it took him three days <laughs> to, to haul all that stuff out of that valley after the Lord fought the battle. And they showed up with worship. Amen? So the next time the enemy is attacking you, you're in a fight, turn up the music and give him praise. Because if the battle is truly the Lord's, then let him have the battle. And if not, then we know that the Bible's not a lie because it's proven right here. I'm reading scriptures to you where the battle is the Lord's and he took care of business. He allowed the children to walk through on dry ground and the enemy got washed away up onto the shore. Jehoshaphat goes to battle. The Lord says, don't worry about it, Jehoshaphat. I got this. But see, the, but the key is you got to leave it in his hands. Right? we got to learn to worship the Lord when times are tough. Because it's easy to worship the Lord when everything's going good. <laughs> but see, the problem is we want, the enemy comes and says, yeah, look what your God's doing. And you begin to believe the lies. You're not doing well. You can't overcome. No, no, you need to sing songs. I am overcoming because I have the power of the Lord. He that is in me is greater than he that's in the world. I can do anything through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Amen? And you begin to sing that. You begin to worship the Lord with whatever he puts on your heart. Let me tell you something. If you allow the Lord to give you a song, he'll give you a brand new song that no one even knew about. Did you ever notice that when singers and worship, uh, Christian worshipers and singers, when they begin to sing songs, and many, many, many of them are about, what, about the power of the Lord, about uh, what's happening in their life and how they've overcome? Even Matthew West, right? He's looking at the church. He's standing at the back of the church, and he's going, is this really the church? Or why is it when people come in, they can't be honest? Why is it that you feel you have to lie to go to church? Right? We need to know that the Lord's battle is the Lord's battle, and our battle is the Lord's battle. Because we're one with him. Are we not? When we receive Jesus Christ, we become one with him. Let's look at another passage in uh, 1 Samuel. I think it's 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel 6, 14 to 16. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, wearing a priestly garment. <laughs> so David and all the people of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouts of joy and the blowing of ram's horns. But as the ark of the Lord entered the city of David, Michal, the daughter of Saul, looked down from her window. When she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she was filled with contempt for him. The Lord, uh, David's in the presence of the Lord. Bringing the ark, the, 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 the Lord's presence into the city. He's excited. He's demonstrating worship. He is the king, and he doesn't care who's watching him. He lost his, priestly gar his, his, his royal garments, and he was dancing in his priestly garments. For a religious purpose, right? To be excited about the Lord. And his wife is going, because you got to remember now, so this, is, this is Saul's daughter, who obviously got jealous, right? So think about David now dancing, and all these women are dancing around him, and there's, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing uh, you know, maybe they did find him attractive or whatever, but you know what? It, it doesn't matter. It was the fact that she became jealous and began to go, I can't believe you dance in front of those girls. What kind of king are you? Demonstrating that kind of stuff, right? And then she became barren forever, right? And, uh, you know, so, so we have to remember that no matter what people are around us, it doesn't matter what your position is, you've got to learn to dance. I try, right? I try dancing because I like dancing. I just, I just need more practice and I need more anointing in the dancing area. But I love to praise the Lord and I love to dance. When we get worshiping, when I listen to songs that just move me, man, everything moves. Amen? Amen. Let's go to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel 12, 15 to 23. After Nathan returned to his home, the Lord sent a deadly illness to the child of David and Uriah's, Uriah's wife. David begged God to spare the child. He went without food and lay all night on the bare ground. The elders of his household pleaded with him to get up and eat with them, but he refused. Then on the seventh day, the child died. 
David's advisors were afraid to tell him. He wouldn't listen to reason while the child was ill, they said. What drastic thing will he do when we tell him the child is dead? When David saw them whispering, he realized what had happened. Is the child dead, he asked. Yes, they replied, he is dead. Then David got up from the ground, washed himself, put on lotions, and changed his clothes. He went to the tabernacle and worshiped the Lord. After that, he returned to the palace and was served food and ate. His advisors were amazed. We don't understand you, they told him. While the child was still living, you wept and refused to eat. But now that the child is dead, you have stopped your mourning and are eating again. David replied, I fasted and wept while the child was alive. For I said, perhaps the Lord will be gracious to me and let the child live. But why should I fast when he is dead? Can I bring him back again? I will go to him one day, but he cannot return to me. Amen. So here we have, you know, King David, and of course we know that he has sin, and the, and, the, and the sin, there's always the result for your sin, right? There's always, there's always a repercussion for the things we do, okay? So we have to understand that, okay? It, it, it's, only, it's only normal for you do something wrong, there's consequences for you wrong. You rob a bank, you're going to jail. God with you or not with you, you're going to jail, right? You broke the law, see you later when you get out, right? Do good things in prison while you're there, Right? But see, here's the thing. So David goes into a fast and a prayer because he's like, I don't want to lose my son, right? We understand that. We can, we can understand where David's coming from. And so he goes into this time of fasting and praying, laying on the ground naked as a king in desperate cries to the Lord. He doesn't get up and go, after the child dies, he doesn't get up and go, well, I'm not serving the Lord no more because he didn't help me. He didn't do blah, blah, blah. You know how easy it would be for us to get into that place? How many have been in that place where we're, we're praying for something and it doesn't happen the way we want it? And we're going, oh. Or we do something wrong and we don't hear, we, we, it's like we don't hear the voice of the Lord, um, you know, and, 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 we, and we end up in a problem or, or we go through a trial or a tribulation and we, and we blame the Lord for it. And David's not doing that. David doesn't, what is the first thing David does? He gets off the ground after the child's dead. He goes into a time of worship. Because worship is the key to set you free. Worship is the key to set you free. And that's, that's why all these examples you see, worship first, and freedom comes. Amen? When we begin to worship the Lord, and we learn to worship Him in our problems, not just in our victories, we'll see the freedom that comes in that. And that's why David's like, hey, you know what? There's nothing I can do. I'm going to Him one day. But for right now, I'm going to worship my Lord, because He's the only one that can. The battle is the Lord's. Amen? The battle is always the Lord's. So put a new song in your heart. What was my next scripture? Acts 16, 22 to 28. I'm just going to paraphrase it. So in Acts 16, it's, it's talking about uh, Paul and Silas, and they're in prison, right? It says that they were beaten with rods. Now, you could, as a Christian, take that quite personal. <laughs> to be beaten severely, it says. They were severely beaten. I'm serving the Lord, doing nothing wrong, and I get severely beaten by rods. And then I'm thrown into a prison, not just in prison, but into the lower parts of the prisons. I'm chained to a cement wall. I'm serving the Lord here, doing nothing wrong. Jesus didn't do anything wrong either, did he? Jesus did not sin, but yet was crucified. Paul and Silas go to prison for sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, beaten, chained to a wall. And they did not say anything about, oh, we're not serving that God no more. He doesn't even protect us. That thought didn't even cross their mind, I'm sure of it. Why? Because they seen the power of God that delivered them. Can you imagine Paul? When, when you look at Saul, who now is Paul, and the things he did, he killed Christians. And God's like, yeah, you're going to serve me? Even, as, even one of the Christians are like, you want me to go pray for Saul? Like, this guy kills Christians? Like, are you out of your mind? And the Lord's like, I know what he did, but I've chosen him to serve me. Let me tell you something. If you're listening to me this morning... If you're hearing me online or in person, God has called you this morning to serve him. And to not just serve him halfway, but serve him 100% of the way. To give all that you have to him. To be completely sold out to him. No matter what your battle is, Paul and Silas are in prison, locked in chains, and they begin to praise, sing praise songs and worship songs at midnight. And they begin to give the Lord thanks and glory. Because they know that when they die, they don't die. 
they just go on to a new place. So they're not concerned, but their concern was, how do we reach the other prisoners in this place? Because it says, as they sang and praised the Lord, all the prisoners were listening, getting saved. So why were they in prison? To set the captives free. And as they sang and as they praised the Lord, an earthquake came and shook, them, shook the doors open. And it says, the moment that the doors flew open, all the chains came off of them. God has set us free. He is our deliverer. The battle is the Lord's, amen? The battle is truly the Lord's. He will set you free. He's already set us free. But those of you that are not free, he will set you free. You just have to dance with glee. Watch me. <laughs> no, you do. You just need to learn to dance and praise him. And he will set you free. It's not just for the disciples. It's for everybody. Just like, just like Lazarus, right? Lazarus, come forth. Comes out of the tomb, wrapped in graves. Untie him. Set him free. Because Christ has came to set the captives free. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise in the house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, I give you the praise, glory, and honor, and I thank you for this congregation online and in person. I thank you, Lord, for their hearts. I thank you for bringing them here this morning. I thank you, Lord, for the word that has been spoken to their hearts, and I pray, Father, that they would just absorb it and that they would worship. The next time they're in a trial or a battle, Lord, that we would learn to just worship you. We'd worship you in those trials and watch the freedom come. Lord, I thank you for giving us victory over all things. Thank you for releasing us and shaking off the chains that held us captive. Bless us today. And Lord, if there's anybody struggling here this morning, I ask you to set them free. If there's any sickness in anyone's body, I command it to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. For we know that the stripes that were taken across Jesus' back is for our healing. We have faith, as James talked about. We believe it that we are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed. See you next Sunday. Same time, same place. Amen? Give the Lord another hand. Sure. Amen. <laughs>